If you have your Bible and want to open it to read with me, I'm in the fourth chapter of the Gospel of John, which is page 1514 in the Bible in the pew. And I'm going to begin my reading with verse 4 down to 17. The passage of Scripture you're very familiar with, but I like looking at these passages, and every time I do, I look to see if we can wring out something new out of it uh, that you haven't thought of before. Something I hope that will bless you and uh, go with you. Chapter 4, verse 4. And now he had to go through Samaria, this referring to Jesus. So he came to a town in Samaria called Sychar, near the plot of ground that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired as he was from the journey, sat down by the well, because it was about noon. When a Samaritan woman came to draw water, Jesus said to her, Will you give me a drink? And then in parentheses, his disciples had gone into town to buy food. So Jesus was there by himself and the young woman who came to the well. The Samaritan woman said to him, You are a Jew and I am a Samaritan. How come you ask me for a drink? For Jews do not associate with Samaritans. And Jesus answered her, If you only knew the gift of God and who it is that asks you for a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Sir, the woman said, You have nothing to draw with and the well is deep. Where can you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us the well and drank from it himself, and did also his sons and his livestock? And Jesus answered, Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water... Indeed, the water I give them will become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life. And the woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I won't get thirsty and have to keep coming here to draw water. And he told her, Go, call your husband and come back. And she said, I have no husband. And I'm going to stop there. I could keep reading. I left out part of the reading ahead of the, ahead of the uh, where I started. And I'm leaving out the rest of the chapter because the whole story keeps going. A very fascinating story. One of the things you will notice about the life and the ministry of Jesus Christ, that he included women in a lot of his ministry. That was not characteristic of the Old Testament. The Old Testament, all the priests and everything that had to do with the church had to do with the men. And in the life of Jesus, Mary and Martha were very close to him. And then there were a number of women that he healed and answered and performed miracles in their sight. And not once, not one, did he turn away. Every one he adds to their questions. Those that had a need, he blessed because he saw in them a quality of faith that was remarkable. So Christianity, wherever Christianity has been, Christianity all over the world has elevated the position of women. When missionaries go to a country, the open schools and put the girls in it, as well as the boys. And so the gift of God is for everybody. And it doesn't distinguish, it doesn't put us in classes of people where one is ahead of the other. 
Sorry, guys. We're equals. Now, Jesus, in this particular occasion, chose to get rid of his disciples for a little while. And I like you mothers, you get rid of the children, you give them something to do just to get them out of your hair. Don't all say amen at the same time. But you know you all did it. There were times when you needed to be alone. You needed to get something done. You needed to get them out from underfoot, and you said, go do this. Well, here's an example of where Jesus did it to his whole, the whole group of disciples. How many men does it take to carry enough bread for 14 people? But he sent all 12. The whole bunch of you, go into town and find some food. He knew what was going to happen. He wanted to talk to this woman by himself. He didn't want the disciples sitting there grumbling in the background and questioning everything he was saying because he was talking to a Samaritan woman. The Jewish nation and the Jewish people and those around them have centuries of disagreeing with each other and not talking to each other. And because the Jewish people thought they were God's people, chosen people, you get the feeling here that they were kind of looking down their nose at some of the other people around them. Some people have the philosophy that the gospel was given to the Jewish people and that the rest of us were second place. Well, up to a point, you're right. Because the Apostle Paul became the Apostle to the Gentiles. And Jesus acknowledged in his dialogue with a woman, yes, salvation did come through the Jews. But today it's being offered to you. And the, the subject that brought them together, Jesus chose a good place to go sit down. He went and he sat down by a well. The well was well, very, not a play in the word, the well was very well known. It was a well that had been dug centuries before by Jacob, son of Isaac, son of Abraham. This well had been there a very long time. And it says here in this passage that the well was given to Jacob's son, Joseph, whom we know didn't get a chance to do too much with it. Because of his brothers, he got ushered off to Egypt, where God used him to save the family and the nation of Israelite people until God was ready to free them some 400 years later and put them on a journey that ended up in Israel to meet the promise that God had made to their father Abraham. So here Jesus struck up a conversation, and I'm going to assume it's a young woman because I can't picture old women having to put a 10-gallon uh, piece of pottery on their head filled with water and walking away with it. Got to be young to do that. That's heavy. And today it's hard for us to even conceive because we live with pipes and wells and unlimited supplies of water. We turn the handle on. The biggest complaint we have, the faucet's leaking. Would you fix it? We don't know what it's like to haul water to drink and water to wash clothes. I want us to take care of the family needs. We don't understand that. We read about it, but it ain't up here because it's not the way that we live. And using that common denominator, Jesus struck up a conversation with a woman and said, would you draw me some water from this well? Now, the woman looked at Jesus like many people in this world look at Jesus. What are you, stupid? He said, that's not in the verse. Don't be disreligious. No, I'm not. 
she looked at him and said, what's wrong with you? You don't have a pail, a bucket, a rope. You don't have nothing. The well's deep. How on earth are you going to fetch water? But I don't think she said it like that. She didn't know who he was. In her head, she was saying, man, this guy's stupid. That's what your girls say all the time. Man, this guy's stupid. <laughs> oh, don't. Come on, laugh. The, uh, and so they struck up a conversation where she thought he was talking about the water from the well, and he was talking about something that didn't come out of the well, living water, that only he could give. And so she said to him, I'm interested. It kind of looked like a salesman's meeting. Now, what do you mean? You want to sell me living water? Uh, she's saying, okay, that means I don't have to come to the well and I don't have to carry all this water. Hey, this is great. What do you got? Can't you see that dialogue going on between them? The Bible doesn't give you every word. It doesn't give you every phrase. It lets you fill the, and connect the dots here. And so she's talking about water that she has to haul, and she made the statement to Jesus, wonderful. Give me some of your water because I'm tired of carrying all this water. Don't blame her. It wasn't easy. We don't know how far she had to carry it. We don't know if she had anything to put it in. It doesn't say if a donkey went with her in a wagon that she was able to put the water in. We don't know. But that was her job. And so they both used the word water, but they were both thinking two different things. She was thinking the water that came out of the well. She said, hey, this is being a good well, all the way back to our father Jacob. And his sons and his cattle this well has never failed. And the scripture says it was on land that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. And they dug a well. And that well had been a wonderful well. You can't beat the water that comes out of a spring. It's better than anything. The people in that day didn't have to drink water with 20 chemicals in it. They didn't have to drink water that had filters on it to filter out the rust of all the pipes that are coming to your house. They had spring water. It was good. It was refreshing. It was wonderful. But it still didn't compare to what Jesus was talking about. You notice every time that Jesus had a conversation with somebody, he goes to the core of what is in their life and what they're dealing with. We just recently talked about the conversation Jesus had to, with Nicodemus when he said, you must be born again. And Nicodemus is trying to process that. He says, oh man, this can't be done. I can't, I can't start over and be born like I was born. No, Jesus said, no. You need to be born again, not the same way you were born. I'm going to give you a new birth that is spiritual. And so Jesus carried on the conversation with this woman. And he said, I want to give you living water. And he went on further to say, if you knew who you were talking to, oh my. I wonder if that's ever occurred in our lives. When God sent somebody our way, we didn't know who he was. And God sent him to help us on a long life's journey. Scripture says that God sends out angels on the way. Maybe somewhere along the way, God sent his messenger to whisper in your ear to help you when you needed it give you the strength that you needed and the guidance that you needed. And you never realized that God had done that. And he said to this woman, if you only knew 
who you were talking to. So that means Jesus looked very ordinary. There wasn't anything that was outstanding about his appearance. He didn't have a wild hairdo. He wasn't all fancied up and loaded with jewelry and everything else. He didn't have a clerical collar on and all the things that church people would like to say, yeah, this is me, I'm the pastor of the French church. He was very ordinary looking when he talked to her. And he made sure that there was nobody else listening because what he wanted to say to her was personal. He said, young lady, after you, I need a drink, but after you set that down, I want you to go call your husband and bring him back and let him join the conversation. And she said to him, I don't have one. And Jesus answered her with the all-knowingness that God has, who knows our beginnings and knows our endings, knows our thoughts. He said to her, yes, I know. You've had five. The gentleman you're with now is not your husband. She says, yeah, that's why I answered you that way. Then she started to realize I'm standing in the presence of a prophet, somebody special. This is somebody from the Old Testament, like the prophets of old. She did go back to her village and told her friends, this man told me everything about my life. He knew it all. We never met before. There's nothing in any one of our lives that God doesn't know. The things that are public, the things that are private, the things that are personal, he knows your thoughts. He knows your fears. He knows the things that keep you up awake at night that you worry about. God knows it all. And so Jesus said to this woman, I've got water to drink. That if you drink of this water, it will spring up inside you until it turns into eternal life. I have living water that will go inside you where there's a thirst that you've been chasing all your life and have not been able to find the satisfaction that you've been looking for. I have water that will satisfy you. He wasn't a Pepsi salesman or a, a Coke salesman. He wasn't pushing some product. He was talking about eternal life that started with him. We are told in the scripture, he is life. He is the resurrection. He forgives of sins. He's the one that heals the human body. And so he started to address the cravings of this woman trying to find satisfaction in her life and she still hadn't found it. He didn't go into the details. And the beauty about Jesus Christ is, Jesus never put one woman down. I challenge you to find me in the Bible where Jesus put a woman down. He didn't say to her, yeah, I know, you're one of them. He didn't say to her, yeah, I know, you made a lot of bad choices. This is the same Jesus that told the crowd that wanted to stone the adulteress, neither do I condemn you. This is the same Jesus that sat still while an alabaster box was broken open over his feet and the very expensive perfume was wiped off with a woman's hair because she was so gratitude of what Jesus had forgiven her for. This is the Jesus that looked up to the women he had created. And he said to this woman, I got something that will finally satisfy the longings of your heart. I have living water. And today the message of Jesus Christ is the same. 
going through my mind as I was driving to the church this morning, and I live in Tiverton. So I come down 24, and as I'm coming on the ramp from the main road in Tiverton, I'm looking at the traffic on 24. And the thought was in my head, I wonder how many of these cars going past me are headed to church. I'd love to do a survey if it wasn't for screwing up traffic and just ask them, you going to church? No. Nope. Next car, you going to church? No. Nope. You going? No. Nope. I'd be very surprised if 5% of the cars going down the road were headed to church this morning. So most of the world still thinks Jesus Christ doesn't know what he's talking about. Because if they really believed what he had to say, they'd be in church somewhere this morning. Think about that. So Jesus said to this woman, I know you have plenty of cravings. The things inside us are the things that drive us in life to do the things that we do. The yearnings, the longings, the things that need to be satisfied in our lives is what drives all of us. You work a job. You work extra hours. You fix your house up. You do all the things that you need to do. There's urges inside you that make you want to do those things. Nothing wrong with that. But Jesus said for that deep longing inside your life, I have living water. And this water ain't coming out of Jacob's well. I don't need a pail. I am the living water. And he said to the woman, if you only knew who you were talking to, she said, well, you know, we have been told that the, the Messiah is going to come. And he stopped for a second and said something very profound to her. I don't know how far she took it. She said, young lady, I am the Messiah that was promised. Wow. He didn't say that to too many people. He said it to this young lady. There was something about her. He wanted to turn her life around. He wanted to give her something no, nobody had ever given her before. He wanted to give her something that would satisfy her deep inside. He wanted to give her the gift of eternal life. And living water that would be satisfying to her in a way that she had never been satisfied in her life. He wanted to do it before his disciples came back. He wanted to make sure there were no distractions, that he had her undivided attention. He said, young lady, I want to give you something you've never had. I want to make you a better person. I want to make you a person that was not the person that walked up to this well today. I'm not talking about Jacob's water out of the well. I'm talking about eternal life, living water. She went away that day a believer. And if you follow the chapter that I did not read to you this morning, you will see that she went home, but she didn't keep quiet. You're not going to believe what happened to me today. They had a blue light special at Jacob's well today. No, that's not what she was saying. You're not going to believe who I talked to. He acted like a prophet. He knew everything about me. But then before it was over, he said to me that he was the Messiah that was promised. He's outside of Jerusalem. He's not in Judea. He's here talking to me, and he shouldn't be here. But he is telling about eternal life. Water that would quench the thirst of the inside of you. Oh, my God. I love Jesus. I love his compassion, his insight. 
I, I love the fact that he confessed to who he really was, to a woman, who then went back to the village and started telling everybody. She didn't keep it a secret. I met a man. I met a man who could do what no one else could do. I feel so different. I feel complete on the inside. I feel brand new. My slate is clean. I have the promise of eternal life. The Messiah talked to me. Mission of the church today is to reveal the Messiah. Not Jesus, the historical one. Not Jesus, they filled up a few pages of gospel writings. Jesus, the only begotten Son of God, who said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men to me. I love Jesus for the story here. I love him for taking the time to answer all the questions that this woman had until she understood him. I love him for sending away the disciples and getting them out of the way so they didn't have a chance to distract what he was saying to the point that the woman would have put up her normal defenses and not listen. Told the disciples, get out of here. I got to tell a woman who I am and that I have living water to give to her. Jesus in his infinite plan as creator of the world chose to spread the gospel through you and me. That knocks me over. In other words, for you and I to be able to tell people about living water. Oh, we read about the Great Commission. We read about that. But it's you and I to tell. I don't have Coca-Cola. I don't have carbonated water, flavored water. I don't have 15% juice water. I have living water. There's a world out there that is ignoring God today in much of their lives. They need the living water of Jesus Christ more than ever. The Bible says, as we see the day of the Lord approach and do not forsake the assembling of ourselves together. That's what we're doing today. But with it comes the reminder of the Great Commission. Go into all the world and preach the gospel. It doesn't say after you drive out of Portsmouth or after you get off of Quidnick Island. It says the whole world. The world you live in, I live in. When God gives you a chance, spread the gospel. Tell the world who Jesus really is. Telling me about living water that you don't have. She got all excited. She thought God was going to, Jesus was going to bless her in her material world. I won't have to carry water anymore. And that's where some churches and some ministers stop. God's going to bless you in everything you do. The message goes beyond that. I'm going to give you eternal life. Something you need inside here. Forgiveness of sins the promise of eternal life. Amen. And I pray that God will use you to share the news that this woman shared with her friends. I met a man. His name was Jesus. Never met, never met a man like him. I'm a whole different person on the inside. 
He gave me water that was not in the well. He didn't need a pail or a rope. I thought he was stupid when he first started talking. But I found out he had something you couldn't fit in a pail. Living water. Let's share it.